Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP-1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We are building two of the Neko space planes so that we can continue with our space station contracts. And so we have to bring three crew up for 60 days and then three crew up for 90 days. And we'll try and do those even though we can't actually pick up the contracts. We are going to try to fulfill them and then I'll just adjust the program in order to complete it. Uh, and I'll get your approval for that, you the viewer. Uh, but while we are building those on ELA-5, I decided that we should just go ahead and build something at ELA-6 for the next Mars window. And I've gone with Mars Station 1 for now, because we don't know how everything else will play out as far as, say, the boil-off, or I should probably just do boil-off tests off to the side uh, instead of uh, doing it in career mode. But um, and also how the captures are going to go, what kind of heat shielding I, what kind of heat shield loading we should go for and what altitude and stuff like that, which will be necessary to plan some of the missions that will require aero capture. This will not require aero capture, it's a station. And we've sort of expanded on our existing station with the hitchhiker storage container. So there's like station one around the earth and uh, without the science lab, the science lab was on station two. And of course we have larger solar panels for Mars. Uh, they provide at apoapsis around the sun about one kilo, a kilowatt a piece. And we also have a lot more fuel. It's going to need to be able to uh, capture with 1,620 meters per second, which is a little bit tight. I might expand this tank a little bit. Let's see if we can sort of keep it tooled, but get a little bit more out of it. Up there we need to tool tank. We can get that much more and then there. Okay, well we can sort of squeeze that much, let's say. And yeah, so we need to be able to do it within that amount. The core, the probe core is a 30 ton probe core, so that's fine. And we're using like a lot of the 3.6 kilonewton thrusters, uh, 12 of them in fact. And so it's a vast array of them with all these little tanks hanging out, but that's how it's going to work. At least they're storable fuel. So the question is whether we can capture with 1,683. Uh, on the current uh, passes that we've been doing, it seemed like that was possible, but there's no guarantee for the one that we send this on whether it's going to be possible. In which case, it's going to need some sort of a rescue, maybe. Well, the problem is we need enough in this stage here in order to make sure it can do the transfer, right? So that's a pickle. I've decided to swap out the RZ-20s for HM-7s. The downside to that is the HM-7s only have one ignition. The upside is that they get better ISP and have a longer burn time. Uh, so in order to compensate for the one ignition, we're, we're going to light two first, and those will be to complete orbit as necessary, and then we'll light four and hopefully that'll work out for us. <laughs> hopefully that'll work out for us. Or if we don't need these two to complete orbit, we can just go with the uh, the four directly, but I think we'll need them. Uh, this is all a little bit tight though, and I'll think about it a little bit. It just depends, because I mean, if you look at this, we're reading, let's, let's say, 8,700 meters per second, but that could be enough. Taking a look at the next Mars window, I mean, insertion burn 2,000 meters per second, and that's to a fairly low orbit. As far as the ejection burn, 3,900. So we can get 300 out of this stage for the completion of orbit. Will that be enough? I don't know. We do have a low thrust to weight ratio at the start, but we tend to get good performance overall. So we have time to fix things up. I've also decided to put six of the volcanes on each of the cores. You could toss a little bit. I had to put an extra tank here so that I could mount them properly. And we, because I want them pointing down, not angled. Uh, but yeah, let's just fill those up. That'll give us a little bit extra. But it doesn't like me right now because we've got too much MMH and, uh, too much MMH and Mon3 on here, I think. We need to modify the pad. So let me just save this because the station needed quite a lot. So we have to modify for 178, so that's fine. I had to unlock the new version of the HM7, just for the record. So as far as the contracts are concerned, somebody had uh, asked whether I was sure that the station was marked a station. It is, I double checked. 
And so Space Station 2 is marked as a station. It is within these parameters for the orbit. And so, uh, and we've completed the contract, improved Space Station. It just doesn't understand this, that station exists. The station hasn't moved or changed names since we completed that contract. And it's also remained a station since we completed that contract. Nothing about it has changed. So that's why we're going to be basically forced completing these uh, in terms of how the program works. Of course, we're not picking it up, so we're not force completing that way, but basically I'll be rewriting the program to just get rid of those conditions. As somebody else had pointed out that uh, the RCS thrusters that we get up here with re reusable attitude control are hydro Hydrolox gas thrusters and not regular Hydrolox. So that's a bit of a complication, and maybe it would be better in that case to just skip these and go with the hypergolic fuels instead, because that's a little bit too complicated. So I'm actually going to cancel the other stuff that we were doing. We'll get the large space plane control one, since we're already working on it. But that leaves us with a lot of science, and I don't know what to do with it, really. I mean, I suppose we could get the Volcane too, but I don't think it's that big an upgrade over the Volcane. A little bit more thrust. It's a little bit weird, but I can't even find where I had placed the Volcane. The Volcane 1 is here. Huh? I think they made uh, these dependent on the orbital rocketry along the way, and so that suddenly... I had gone up the ladder, but since now they've made it dependent on orbital rocketry, which should be something different, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Uh, each step is required for the Hydrolox, and so the Hydrolox takes longer. And that's why I don't have it unlocked. So, okay, fine. I uh, see I already unlocked this, so unlocking this one sort of frees that up now. So I guess I'll try and do it legitimately by their rules or whatever. And so we need all the way up to here, and then we have the Volcane that we've been using. Uh, and then uh, if we wanted Volcane 2 because we want more thrust, which, you know, considering the way we're clustering the bloody things, maybe I want more thrust. Uh, that might be a good idea. But also the Volcane 2 is heavier, so that's a downside to it. Maybe we'll unlock these, but for now at least that gives us something to spend our science on. I mean, I've owned these. So actually, the HM7B Plus is all the way... We're already all the way up here, really. So, okay, wait, we have to get these now, too. These are not research. So I'm all the way up here. And so I'm getting these for completion purposes because they've reordered things. Okay, heading into this maneuver with this early arriver. Let's do its course change. Okay, so its status looks good. It's all charged up. Seems to have communication, though 71%. So, let's see, how far out are we? Well, it's not ideal. But it's not exactly linear, so maybe it'll be alright. Well, maybe I shouldn't use all the thrusters. It's going to be pretty quick. We don't have downward facing RCS on this one, so that's annoying too. Maybe more efficient to just go backwards and then use the RCS. These are just for landing, really. Hmm. I think I'm going to try that. Alright, bringing it in just with the RCS. Well, since we're doing it backwards, not a big surprise that's a bit off. Uh, that'll be close enough. We can probably bring it in once we get into the SOI. And just turning to face the sun right now will throw it off, so... We have... Uh, it's a little bit high, but we can work with it. So SOI change alarm now, and we'll meet up with it when we get over there to Mars. We'll probably get done with one of the space planes and be able to launch it before we have to look at this again. Indeed, we are ready to go with an Echo, and so, well, we've done it before, so it should be alright, right? 
Um, why is there no buy available to fill a crew cabin? Hold on. But this carrier ADV, and it uh, also has proficiency with it, it says Mark II crew cabin. They've changed these, uh, the crew cabins and such to these carrier ADV things, advanced and carrier early. So the Mark I crew cabin is in carrier early now, and this Mark II crew cabin is in carrier advanced. That's great and all, and we've trained it now, but it doesn't seem to work. Okay, looking at the configs, it looks like proficiency of carrier advance requires carrier early as well, maybe? Maybe that's the thing? Why that should be, I have no idea, but there's a comma there. And this proficiency carrier early is yellowed? Heck, for this part, part is still being researched. How do we have the research for advanced already done, then? It seems like they've completed it. Oops. Okay, proficiency of early and advanced. Now does it count? No. Uh, it seems like everybody else was trained for carrier advanced instead of Mark II cockpit. But then, I'm, I'm confused. I thought the four were trained for Mark II cockpit, but it seems like these two were trained for Mark II cockpit, but I thought those two were the ones I had trained for the Mark II crew cabin. Okay, all right, all right. Now we've got two in the... Uh, I just needed to do proficiency for that carrier advance with everybody. It's a little bit weird, but okay. Uh, we've got two in the cockpit, one in the crew cabin, and so that's the three that we need. We'll give them shoots and EVA packs as before and let's hope that nothing else goes weird things have been updated so they could go weird sure enough we're launching in the dark so we'll be landing in the dark too well it'll be two months though they have to stay up there for two months so maybe things will progress a little bit Okay, so here they are, SAS on, throttle, not working today. Throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Well, all is well so far. It's loud. We should be through max Q now. Okay, engine cutouts for G-forces. Okay, booster set. Oh, uh, hopefully it doesn't start wobbling. It's starting to wobble. Well, we're gonna enable crossfeed there and try ignite the shuttle's engines to help. And previously, uh, I, I'll just shut down these. I really... I thought that moving two of them over there would help, but it doesn't seem to. Oh, we can start this sort of thing. Can't do that one. But ion sensing altitude control, apparently we can do. Oh, we're wobbling a bit. Well, I think that's it for that stuff, so off that goes. Did it used to perform this well before? I didn't think we ended up with that much Delta V extra before. Well, we should probably pitch up a little bit more though. Okay, we are in orbit, and these guys had a long burn. Okay, we have a tangency there. Okay... Well, that's a nice little encounter right there.
All right, we have docked. So uh, let's note the time, two years, 104 days. So we're looking for 60 days here. We'll aim for two years and 165 days on that clock. And also we can use this date here or the fact that we have to do that Duna mission in 60, 60 days and 20 hours. That might also be a thing. Oh, this actually reset the clock on the crude duration record, so that's convenient too. Um, uh, hopefully if I go to the tracking station, it keeps that one going. Let's see. Okay, it did continue ticking down. And as far as station 2 is concerned, it looks like Kerbalism is happy. Uh, we've got 219 days worth of food, water, and oxygen. So that'll cover the 60 days here and then the 90 days of the next mission, hopefully. As far as our Kerbal health is concerned, Muhammad's got 12% radiation. The other two are in single digits. None of them have any stress, so that's good. 20 days left, still looking okay. Okay, crew duration record of 60 days is complete, so we've got that. And let's head back to the station and see how they are doing. Preferably get them back before the probe that we have entering Mars SOI needs our attention. So how are we? 6% stress. Radiation hasn't changed. And we still got plenty of hydrogen and oxygen inside the space plane. Now well, we got the ion sensing altitude control thing done. But we're not at all in line with Kuru right now. We'll get into our standby orbit, one and a half hour orbit. That'll at least get us away from the station. Ignition. All right, that looks good enough. Um, maybe one more. So it will be nighttime there. Okay, retrograde. And ignition. Okay, let me fine tune that with the RCS. Okay, that's our 40 kilometers. I'm surprised it reads the target difference so close already. Okay, well, hmm, interesting prediction. All right. Well, before we hit the atmosphere, we need to dump our spare mass. So, all right. No more of the hydrogen and oxygen, basically. We'll be on internal power, the battery power, because we won't have enough fuel cell fuel. Okay, and wastewater dump. Might as well do a waste dump. Got a lot of the MH and Mon 3 here that we probably don't want up there. Let me move what we can into the tail. And then we'll dump whatever's in the nose. Okay, well that's 17 tons enough for me. Well now it reads us falling short, but hopefully we'll get lift as usual. And we're going in the dark. Yeah, it's very firmly in nighttime still. Hopefully by the time we get the three month mission done, it'll be coming down in daylight. Okay, now we've got an indicator there, but our vertical speed is trending to zero, so we'll be going up soon. All right, we are here. And, well, it's still reading us falling short there, so... Well, okay, now that target difference number is closing. And we are going to be going up again soon. I feel like we've had fewer overheating indicators. But we're getting slower and getting closer, pretty much in line. 
I'm gonna try and put out the air brakes at this point. Ah, uh, we're we're passing it. Uh oh. Well, I'm gonna take manual control here. Okay, I'll take in the air brakes. We're generally going in the right direction now. All right, well, I'll activate the OMS engines, the ones we never use because they're backup. And we will dump the spare MH and Mon 3. Can't even see where the land is. Apparently we're flying over water. Okay, we're closing that gap. I can tell by the clouds we're over the Kuru area landscape. Well, let's cut the engines there. Need to be able to see the place though. Well, let's go a little bit further this way. Well, no more RCS. I see some sparkling things over there. Need to be able to see a runway though. I mean, we're six kilometers away in closing. There must be some clouds. I mean, is that the runway? I think that's the runway. Okay, 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 I can see things now. All right, all right. We can manage. It's not ideal, but we can manage. Still not an easy approach. Okay, touchdown. All right, well. Come to a stop here. We are back with Mohammed, Sarolta, and Barbell, and that is mission completed. Of course, uh, the crew duration rec record didn't require us to <laughs> bring them back safely, but the station contract that we can't pick up does. And of course, we want to bring them back anyway. So, recover vessel. All right, well, they are back and they will be. Uh, on leave until February 8th, and they have some, well, Muhammad does not have any change to the retirement, but the other two have a token change, but not too long, so we'll have to watch out for that. Anyway, we managed to do that in time for our probe that's arriving at Mars, so let's pay attention to that now. Well, there's Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter. Where's the red planet? Anyway, we are in Mars SOI, so let us see. We really want to bring that periapsis down, orbit. Calm seem fine. We, uh, we have 36%. Oh, I should probably go the other way around, though. Just to use the RCS for it. Oh, there it is. There's Mars and apparently Phobos and Deimos. Okay, so how far into the atmosphere do we want to bring it? Oh, it's still going. All right. Uh, well, we've got 39 kilometers right now. That's probably too low. I'm looking at my book of data for this sort of thing. So we're roughly one ton on a two meter heat shield, so one meter radius heat shield, so pi. We a pi here. Well, I think definitely we would not be able to escape. I want to try and capture into an orbit. 
I think I'm gonna try 54 kilometers, but now we're too high again. Well, maybe I should shade uh, a little bit more towards maybe landing. We definitely don't want to skip out and head into interplanetary space again, after all. So, all right. My, my theory is that 54 kilometers would get us a good capture with this mass on this heat shield. But uh, I'm going to go for 52. Periapsis might be blocked from comms. By my prior data, basically we have a 3 kilometer window as far as capture is concerned. Anything below that will be going straight down. And everything above that, in terms of the periapsis we set here, will have us flinging out into interplanetary space. We actually sort of want comms <laughs> when we land, because I do need to fire the engines. That is a problem. But we'll get data one way or another. Well, it is seeming pretty fast as far as our where we're coming in, so and go 45 here, because this is faster than I thought. Normally on all the test data I had, we were not coming in this quickly. Well, at this point, I'm just going to retract the solar panels. 20% wear, by the way. I'm going to arm all the chutes. And it's going to hold negative surface. Oh, we lost comms. Well, let's see if we capture or if we go straight down. And if we go straight down, we won't be able to fire the retro rockets. So it'll have to litho break. We are in the atmosphere of Mars. I hope it's at least doing some science. Ah, it stopped. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Whoops. Well, we wouldn't be able to transmit it anyway unless we've got it in a good situation, so... Probably doesn't matter. The surface of Mars up close. I guess for the first time in this series. When we hit periapsis, uh, surface speed of about 5,000 would be good. We've got some overheating. Really don't want to see that. A little bit lower than 5,000 there. That might be uh, us coming straight down then. Too low, I kept correcting it. But important data. We really don't need this much of later. Uh-oh, that's a little bit early, but they're holding. I feel like that's not the altitude I wanted them to come out at. We'll have to check the parachute configs on the others. No, I think the mains were the ones that were misconfigured. These are the drogues. The mains should have been configured to come out later, and they came out way early. But held. Guess that's good. Uh, yeah, we went too fast and I shouldn't have been time warping, but still. Scant possibility of recovery. Only 43 point- well, there's bits. Well, they're only solar panel bits. 43.5 meters per second. Yeah, okay, well, we got our answer with that one a little bit later. And so I overcorrected for the fact that I arrived early. I should have just stuck to my guns and stuck to 54 kilometers. But no. Oh well, anyway, back to Space Center. So alright, we got one station mission done, and well, our first Mars probe didn't go so well, but we've got others arriving, and I sort of intended it to be a test anyway, so it'll be alright. So with that, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.